All right, so Alan Wake 2 came out a few months ago and took home three awards at the Game Awards show. And all I ever hear about this game is how good it really is. Which is why today I decided to play the original first and platinum it before going for the second game in the future. Alan Wake's platinum trophy has a total of 51 trophies and requires two playthroughs at least to get, with around a massive 300 collectibles within. The game opens up with episode one called Nightmare. This is sort of the chapter system for Alan Wake. They just call it all episodes to be cool. But Alan is right next to his crash car, and this first mission sort of just tells you how the game works. Basically, you gotta be in a light to be safe, and you have to shine light at enemies until they break, I guess you could say. After that point, you can damage them, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the basics. I also got my first trophy, like, right away after finishing the tutorial, you could say. I also used a flare for the first time and got a triple kill, which is more action than I've ever gotten in my entire life. The ending of this first part then has you run away from, like, a big storm or something until reaching the lighthouse, which is is the safe place. Alan then has a heart attack and wakes up from his nightmare to a dime piece. God, I miss the old days of games when the female protagonists always had looks. Where did we go wrong? Bruh. Anyways, Alan and his girl are vacationing in this quaint town called Bright Falls, which is ironic since this godforsaken place is darker than my soul. You then go to a diner to find the landlord who has your keys to the house we rented. In the diner, I also began a missable trophy where you had to turn on this jukebox for these old loonies right here. I then went to the bathroom to find the dude we are after and that's kind of impatient which is why this lady from the shadows spawned in to make me feel bad about myself she was also super scary and looks straight out of a funeral we then made it to divers isle which is where we are staying the house had no power however since it's older than my ass hair and just for some lore alan's wife alice is deathly afraid of the dark so basically she is a dumb child that's what i'm saying but i turned the generator on and got a trophy for doing that it was now nighttime and alice was uh Looking real good if you know what I mean. But she wasn't available, I guess, and instead showed me a typewriter in the study. This is because Alan is a writer and is going through a dry patch right now, putting out even less stories than Kanye puts out music. And Alan was a tad bit annoyed, which is why he didn't rush to save Alice when she fell off the balcony in the house. Loki is skill issue and she is now dead. But Alan is now in a car. I'm already confused, what is going on? So the new objective is to get to the gas station so we can call for help and not die in the darkness. But on the way, a lot of scary things happened, like loose wood. We don't want another I show meat incident now, do we? So on the way to the gas station, you pretty much just wander through the woods and fight the shadow people. This must be what schizophrenics see on a late night drive. I'm so sorry for you all out there. This sucks. Anyways, I got a trophy for doing some perfect dodges, which I must say, the dodging system in this game makes me feel like an autistic turtle. For some unknown reason, the sprint button and dodge button are the same button. Make it make sense. Anyways, I ended up in this timber yard again, and we got to fight the first, like, extra hard enemy, I guess you could say. These enemies are sort of invisible for a few seconds until they teleport in front of you and stuff. But I managed to break the man to a soul and did it with a revolver, not a woman, which gave me a trophy. We then finally made it to the glorious gas station, called for help, and another Another dime piece showed up. However, she does kind of look like a discount version of Alice, so we will still search for her. But the cop lady is called Sarah, and she tells Alan he is basically tripping nuts and shows him Diver's Isle doesn't even exist and there is no cabin there. What? Mind blown. And yeah, that was the end of episode one. Episode two begins with a flashback to life in New York City. I don't know what's worse, this or getting chased in the dark by monsters. It is now present day and Alan is in the police station getting checked out because he is obviously losing his mind. Anyways, Alan got his phone back from timeout and got a call immediately from someone claiming to have Alice captive. So now we are on a wild goose chase to find the man who has Alice. But Alan had to take a break and punch this old man for fun. My kind of guy. So the dude we are after is at Lover's Peak, and that's the main goal to reach for this episode. But of course, we have to go at night, so there's enemies absolutely everywhere. And I ended up killing another one of those ultra-strong enemies, which gave me another trophy. This is so epic. I then got another trophy for opening a chest in this scary cave, which was filled with goodies. Uh, no drugs, though, so that's unfortunate. I did end up reaching the first place where I died, however, right here. And for some reason, this part was just insanely hard. I'm also convinced you are supposed to just run past the enemies and reach the 
the safe place, which is what I did, and then we continued on the walk of death through the dark. Alan also rode on some, like, cart suspended in the air, and it obviously broke since nobody has used that in years. But when you awake, the kidnapper is there and he asks for your help as a matter of fact. But you don't get any weapons and have to just flash enemies and use flares, which was super annoying. I also picked up another coffee thermos and got a trophy. By the way, this is the most annoying collectible and has a total of 100 oh of them. God. We then had a ton more enemies come at us until they all died and the floor broke out from below. You then wake up and the kidnapper runs away like a little sissy lala just because I had a gun. What a weirdo. Anyways, I picked up another manuscript and got a trophy. Now the objective is to just get through the woods because there's monsters everywhere. You do get to go into a car at one point, and this is the only point I ever feel safe within the darkness. Which is why I ran over 15 enemies for fun and got a trophy for it. The end of this mission now has us returning to Barry, who was Alan's business manager or something like that. However, the house is overrun with birds, and since birds aren't real, I killed a thousand of them by restarting checkpoint over and over and got a kind of annoying trophy for that. So that was the end of episode 2, and Alan is now writing a story about what is going on to try and bring Alice back. But we got a trophy for that ending, so that's cool. Episode 3 now has us being chased after by the police because Alan did something wrong, I guess. No, I don't really fully understand this game's story, but I got most of it. However, this whole Alan in trouble by the law never made sense to me. The dude did nothing wrong aside from being extremely lost. Like seriously, what did he actually do that was wrong? I don't know. But I got a trophy for even more dodging. How nice. And then another one for using flashbangs on enemies, which is by far my most favorite way to eliminate them, since it brings a new meaning to flashing. The new objective after getting away from the popo is to reach the train depot, because yes. And on the way, I knocked over a stack of cans and got a trophy. I also got a trophy later when being chased by a big man for using a flare. So I ended up at the train place and now I have to find a car. Look, you can see it way over there. Before getting to it though, you have a boss fight with an inanimate piece of construction equipment. And these inanimate objects are by far the most annoying and difficult enemies in the game. Mostly because they don't have any emotions and will relentlessly try to bring you down. Reminds me of Modern Woman. And after I took it out, I got a trophy because it was so awful. And that was sort of the end for that part of episode 3. Now it's daytime, which is awesome, and we are heading to the coal mine to meet the kidnapper at noon. However, this guy never showed up and poor, poor Alan was left all alone until nighttime when he then got a call to meet the guy at some other place. Not gonna lie, this is one of the dumbest scam attempts ever and poor Alan cannot see it since he is blinded by that cock of his. Anyways, right away there is some fighting with inanimate objects and just normal taking enemies, but you can restart checkpoints here to farm kills for a trophy on the inanimate objects. I did this because why not? But it's definitely not needed since you have to kill a load of these in the future anyways. On the journey to Mirror Peak, which is the next meat spot, I also killed an enemy while it was in the light of a spotlight and got a trophy. I then got a multi-kill with a flashbang, which also gave me another trophy. And we also ended up in a ghost town with loads of inanimate objects trying to murder me. And one of them was a train. Now I hate trains, so I killed the train and got a trophy. Just kidding, trains are awesome. I also made it into a mine which had some annoying fights and a cool puzzle section. And in the puzzle, I did it totally wrong but somehow had it placed in the perfect position and managed to skip half the puzzle which was kinda funny. Alan then got to ride out of their cart and it broke again. One of these times is gotta be functional, it just has to be. I also almost got crushed by a falling crate out of the sky. That's pretty interesting. So we caught up to the kidnapper guy finally and he lost it. Also, he has never had Alice to begin with and ended up going bye bye. So that was the end of episode three and we got a trophy. Episode four then has Alan in a mental institution. He finally made it. So you then get to go explore that place and that's great. But by the time night comes, all hell breaks loose and you can get a trophy for listening to all of these tapes on the tape machine. And another for interacting with a TV in some room. We also had to fight through a load of gardens and stuff, which was kind of difficult and made me a bit annoyed in the process. The rest of this episode then has you travel through the wilderness to try and reach some farm which holds answers. But I got a trophy for using the six shooter gun and getting lots of kills with it. There was then a super long and hard combat sequence which took place on a rock concert stage. And much like the normal Travis Scott concert, loads of people died here. But the trophy gotten is for not letting your health drop below 25%. This isn't really easy to do but it's very doable if you just throw down flares whenever you begin to feel like you're slipping or getting attacked. So I did that and got the trophy. I then got another one after for using flares on 50 enemies total, and another right after while running away screaming and crying, but the enemy ran into a loose cable and died. 
idiot. And I also got another for using a ton of radios and listening to this old man speak on them. Alan and Barry then made it to the farm and found some answers that they were after. So they celebrated by getting absolutely wasted. And Alan woke up the next morning to that annoying FBI guy and we got a trophy ending episode 4. Episode 5 begins and you are in prison again. Thankfully that dumb FBI guy gets taken out of this life. You then have to follow Sarah around and take out enemies trying to reach a helicopter to get to a power plant. I also got a few trophies during this episode, first for killing a ton of enemies at once with a flare gun, and then for finishing off that jukebox trophy from the first episode. We then reach the helicopter and there is a final push from the enemy masses, which wasn't too bad because you get given a load of items. And if you didn't die or reset checkpoint throughout the entire chapter, you will also get a trophy. The next part has Alan on his own and I got 50 kills with a shotgun in the game. After a while, I made it to the power plant and got a trophy for figuring out this gate puzzle. The rest of the episode then has you reach the top of this dam, and you pretty much just run past a ton of inanimate objects trying to kill you. But you make it to this light room which has a light switch in it that was a lore thing from earlier, and is significant in the game story. However, I don't really know how to explain it, so we just got a trophy and that's cool. The last episode, episode 6, begins back with another flashback, and if you turn on this TV and have been turning them on all game, you get the trophy for all the TV collectibles. Episode 6 has you trying to get back back to the fake cabin at the lake, and on the way there I found all the signs for another collectible trophy, and also got all the chests, and found all the normal manuscripts as well. There was also a trophy for not using any guns on this last episode, which is pretty easy honestly since flares are overpowered and I got that trophy. I then took out this tornado with a flare gun and got another trophy. You also get set into this weird dark place and have to shine lights on text to make stuff appear. I did it on a coffee and managed to get number 100 of the coffee mugs for that trophy. So now it's the final scene and Alan begins to write the story to the finish in the dark place. He ends up saving Alice after all, but not himself in the process. Rip Bozo. And we got two trophies for beating the game on normal difficulty. So now it's time to go back and replay the game on the new difficulty available. Nightmare. This basically makes the enemies way more annoying, and you have to just run away from them 90% of the time. But I got my first trophy during this for actually killing two enemies at once with a shotgun. I have no clue how I didn't get that to begin with. And then another for finally getting 50 kills with a hunting rifle. I then neared the end of the game again and got every Nightmare Mode manuscript finally gathering every single collectible in the game. Which, it, that was awful bro. And then I beat the game on Nightmare Mode. <laughs> easy. My final trophy was a speedrun trophy however where you need to make it to Cauldron Lake in under 30 minutes. This is done in the second part of episode 3 when you have to travel through the train yard, mines, and all that good stuff. I actually did it in around 20 minutes because on easy you can quite literally just run past all enemies essentially. So I got that trophy pop of course. And then the platinum right after. Here is the platinum in my library and I must say Alan Wake has one of the best and also most confusing stories out of any game I've ever played. But I genuinely did love playing it. The game feels like a great horror movie and I really wish there was a movie about it because that would slap. So it's safe to say I'm excited for Alan Wake 2. And if this video hits 5,000 likes, I'll do a video about it right away. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.